So this is one of the chapter three question in chapter six at the end of the chapter six, question number 44. Uh, 100 watts, 120 volt bulb is to be operated under a potential difference of effective value 200 volt, 240 volt and frequency 50 hertz. Calculate the capacitance of the capacitor that should be connected in series with the bulb to allow it to eliminate with the same power. So uh, there is a bulb according to this question. This bulb operates uh, with 120 volt and when it operates with under effective potential difference of 120 volt, its power is going to be 100 watt. Bulbs uh, can be considered to be uh, two resistors, uh, but uh, resistance of a bulb can only be changed by temperature. That's why we are going to consider there is no change in temperature, so it's going to have a constant resistance. And um, according to the given information, this bulb can uh, give a power of 100 watt, only if it operates under a potential difference of effective potential difference of 120 volt. And the potential difference across the bulb must be equal to 120 volt. In this case, this bulb can have a power which is equal to 100 watt. Question tells you that we are going to connect this bulb to a generator or the source whose potential difference is 250 volt. And we are going to connect this bulb to an AC source, this AC source will have an effective potential difference of 240 volt. But if you connect directly this source to this uh, bulb, and this time uh, power of the bulb will increase. Maybe it can cause it uh, bulb to be burned out. But that's why question says that we are going to connect at this capacitor calculate the capacitance of capacitor, they should be connected in series, in a series with the bulb. And we are going to connect the capacitor in series with the bulb. And, and this 240 total effective potential difference, which is 240 volt, will be shared by the bulb and the capacitor. Of course, capacitor will have a potential difference VC. By this way, we are going to eliminate this uh, bulb with the same power. Yeah, the power of the bulb will stay 100 watt. So we should calculate what is C for this capacitor. Okay, this is this RC series circuit. Uh, if I want to calculate uh, C for the bulb, uh, what is only this is only way I can calculate C. I have to first calculate XC, and XC must be calculate it first. And the first thing we have to do is to calculate XC. Because inside the XC, there is a C. And by means, by use of the XC, I can calculate C. Yeah, the first step is calculate XC, then calculate C. Uh, but uh, to calculate XC, I need to know potential difference across the capacitor. And also I need to know electric current to the capacitor. None of them is given in this information. So because it's a series circuit, I'm going to use the property of the series circuit. What is the property of series circuit? Uh, potential difference, when we add the potential difference, we are going to calculate total potential difference. And also in series, electric currents are equal. Yeah, electric current on the bulb is going to be, say that it's I effective, will be the same electric current on the capacitor because capacitor and bulb are in series. So I will start uh, from calculating the electric current of the circuit. To calculate this, I, um, I can use the power equation for the bulb, because we know that power equation PIV. So power is equal to this effective value of the electric current on the bulb, and effective, effective potential difference on the bulb. So this power is given. Uh, so effective potential difference across the bulb, 120 is given. So I can calculate what is the effective current. So this is what I'm talking about. Power is equal to VR effective potential difference across the bulb multiplied by electric current. Then divide by VR. I can calculate electric current power is 100 watt. Potential difference across the bulb is 120. When I divide them, I will calculate electric current of the circuit. And this electric current is at the same time electric current for the capacitor. So I am going to also write this in here in where uh, electric current in the equation for calculating XC. But one more thing I need to know. We see. 
Then I am going to use again property of the series combination. What is that? Total potential difference is going to be in series. Potential difference on the resistor plus potential difference of the capacitors squares. And yeah, square of the total effective potential difference of the circuit is going to be potential difference square on the capacitor plus potential uh, difference square on the uh, on the part of the resistor and capacitor. So if I want to calculate this, I have to transfer Vt squared to the left side. So Vc squared is going to be Vt squared minus Vr squared after that, if we get to it. So I can calculate what is Vc. So uh, then we will calculate to total effective potential difference is the source uh, potential difference, which is 240 it's squared minus uh, pulse potential difference, 120 squared. When I do quick calculation, I can calculate what is the capacitor's potential difference. So then I'm going to insert it in here. Now I have two quantities known. I know what is VC, I know what is IE. And I can calculate what is XC. So VC is 208, which we calculate in here. IE is the same as the like, uh, resistor, which is we calculated in here, 0.83. So then XC, total position of the capacitor to electric current can be calculated 251. Then I can use the equation for XC, which is one over two pi FC. F is also given in the question, which is, uh, 50 hertz, then I'm going to replace xc and c. c is going to be 1 over 2 by f xc. After that, we are going to insert the numbers. 2 by 6.28, f is 50. xc is calculated as 251. And then we calculate the result is going to be 1.27 times 10 to negative 5. And if we calculate in microfarad, if you multiply this by 10, 10 to the power of 6, result is going to be 12.7. Micro for that is the capacitor of the capacitors. The capacitors of the capacitor must be connected in series with the bulb to eliminate the bulb with the same power. There's one more question, uh, which I didn't do. It's a uh, video in 2018. This question number 55. So I will also explain this question number 55. It's this question, I think. Yeah. A capacitor of capacitance 400 microfarad is connected in series to a pure resistor of resistance uh, 10 ohm across an AC source of frequency 250 divided by pi hertz. If the effective value of the potential difference across the capacitor 18 volt, so let me draw the case. There is a capacitor of capacitance uh, 400 microfarad, so C is equal to 400 microfarad. And it's going to be connected to a resistor, Q resistor, R, whose resistance is 10 ohm. They are connected across a source, AC source, and generator. This AC source uh, potential difference, effective potential difference is not given. Ha, ah, what is given? Its frequency is given. Frequency of the source is 250 divided by I heard that's given. And also, if the effective value of the potential difference across the capacity, and this potential difference is given, uh, Vc, Vc is given, Vc is equal to 80 volts. So, then find the effective current and potential difference across the two resistors. And what is the Vr? And also, what is Ie? Effective current because uh, pro, uh, the series uh, circuit is series in series electric current on the capacitor, yeah, and IE on the capacitor, and IE on the resistor. Same that's why if I want to calculate IE on the resistor, so I should calculate IE on the capacitor, they are equal. But to calculate electric current, uh, we need to know what is potential difference across the capacitor. It's given to 18 volt, but also XC must be calculated. What is XC for capacitor? So C is given, frequency is given, uh, then we can calculate XC first, which is 2 pi, 1 over 2 pi FC. 2 pi F is given in the frequency of the source 250 divided by 5, and then capacitance is 400, uh, 400 times 10 to the power of negative 6, and when we write it, we have again, 400 times 10 to the power of negative 6, perhaps 4 times 10 to the power of negative 4. Then, uh, then we take the bracket, we'll get XC as 5. And after that, we can calculate electric current on the capacitor, which is the same as electric current on the resistor. So 18 is the potential difference, effective potential difference across the capacitor. 5 is the 
uh, exceed for the capacitor and electric current on the capacitor is 3.6 volt, yeah, which is the same as electric current on the resistor. Then uh, electric current resistor is calculated, and also now I uh, can calculate effective electric current or potential difference on the resistor by Ohm's law, which is worse. Because I know what is R, which is given the question as 10, and IE now calculated, IE in here, we calculated it, I want to insert in here. So I can calculate the potential difference across the resistor, 3.6 times 10, which is going to be 36 volt. And also, find the effective value of the potential difference of the source. One total potential difference, in fact, we will calculate that. But there is, in fact, three ways. We can use the potential differences and um, calculate V total, V total is equal to in series, which is V R squared plus V C squared square root. You can use this as well. Then uh, V R, we, now we know what is V R, it is 36. 36 squared plus V X, V, uh, v C is given 18 squared. This is going to be total potential difference across the source. And total potential of the source, I can use also this one. 36 squared plus 18 squared, square root, square root of the source, 40. And it's going to be almost 40. Well, also, we can continue. Uh, you can calculate the Z for the circuit. And R well, squared plus X is squared. R is given X, you calculate 11.5. Also, we can use also for the circuit and the total potential difference of this generation is going to be electric current of the circuit multiplied by total opposition and 3.6 is the electric current total opposition and Z is calculated 11 point uh, then you can also calculate the same answer yeah there are two ways which one you are going to cover it's up to you and uh, represent the vectorially the potential difference across the resistor and capacitor and the current I think there's four components the torque current so we know in a resistor electric current is in phase with the potential difference, and the potential difference of the VR is in phase, but potential difference of the capacitor will be, uh, will be lagging behind electric current is going to be leading. So this is the phase for resistor to resistor, this is phase for the, what uh, the capacitors of the circuit. And also, Osprey is asking us uh, uh, here what is the uh, phase angle difference? Uh, tangent theta is equal to we know x l minus x c divided by r for uh, series circuit tangent theta x x l minus x c divided by r. So x l is zero because there is no coil in the circuit. That's why negative x c divided by r because tangent theta, theta is going to be negative x x c we calculate as Five negative five divided by r is going to tell. It's going to be negative twenty six point twenty six point six. So we, then we can get represent it like this. So in a series circuit, electric current potential difference across the resistor one phase, but uh, potential difference across the resistor is going to, capacitor is going to be lagging behind by ninety. So we see after that then we. Combine them, we can calculate total potential difference and total potential difference in electric current will have a phase angle, which is 26.6. Yeah, potential difference will be total potential difference will be lagging behind electric current by 26.6. That's what's negative. So, this is all about these two questions. So, about these two questions, we will finish the chapter in questions, all of them will be answered. Also, there's a few. Um, Standard test question, uh, the students get difficulty. Question number two is one of them. For a coil shown on the figure, what must be done to induce the clockwise current? This is the electric current reaction clockwise. And it, this is the say that a table, this coil is put on a table, surface on the table, or the book, or if you page, whatever, and put your pen on the table or close perpendicular vertically and Make a clockwise current on the coil. If you do that, as you are going to see that if you make a clockwise current, then if you move your forefinger around, turn your forefinger around to your pen, which is clockwise fashion, you will see that your thumb points the bottom of the page, bottom of the pen. And if such a clockwise current is must be circulating on a, a coil, the bottom must be ample, upper side must be asphalt. So now we choose uh, 
Oh, what's this point? Now we are going to, or which this boss we will check the method. I'm not going to check all of them, so I will check the correct answer, which is B. I did move the south pole of a magnet down, and magnet, we can assume that. If we move south pole of a magnet down, so magnet and coil will be approaching each other, and if the magnet and coil approaches each other, we make them approaching each other. A pair of force between them appears to try to repel each other. An M pole, S pole must face, S pole, this is correct. Or instead of doing this, uh, move a north pole of the bear magnet up and out of the coil, again, which means you are going to move N pole away from the coil. If you pull bar magnet and coil away from each other, in the case of moving, they will try to repel it, track each other. So and if M pole is receding, so the apple side must be S pole again. And these B, B choices provides uh, both of them. Yeah, South pole move down or not pole move away. Both of them makes the upper uh, end of the curve is south and lower it becomes north, and which provides a curve which is called to flow clockwise fashion. One more question, Janice, you can make this question number from six to seven. So it's about transformer problem. From left to right, what are the types of two transformers? Um, from left to right, yeah, left is in here, right is in here. So first transformer, second transformer. From left to right, this is the input coil. Input coil is the, this first coil on the left, input line N1 for the first coil. This is N2 for the second coil. As you see, for the first coil, for the first coil, this coil, N1, N2 is less than N1. So if n two is less than one point fifty n thousand, it's a step down transformer. Yeah, this is a step down transformer. Okay, let's now check the other transformer from left to right. This is n n one, which is input coil, and this is n two, which is output coil. So again, n one is n two is less than n one, n one is greater than n two. So again, this is step down, step down transformer. So both of them step down transformers. And about this, there's one more question. Uh, so it is, what is the output potential difference from the secondary coil of the transformer on the right? So I am going to now solve this one. Let me clear this first, all of them. So now this is, uh, this is the question. What is, uh, what is delta V then? Output, potential degree from the secondary coil of the transformer on the right. We will find this. Then step by step, we will go, we will continue with first transformer because I need to know potential difference between these points, which is going to be V2 for the first transformer, which is output of the first transformer. At the same time, this potential difference is going to be V1 for the second transformer. Yani V2 for the first is going to be V1 for the second because these two coils are connected between these two points, same points, so their potential difference must be equal. So now let's calculate V2 for first transformer. We know that V2 divided by V1 is equal to N2 divided by N1, which is the transformer equation. Then I can calculate V2 for second, first transformer, N2 over N1, N2 over N1, N250, N1 is 1,000 multiplied by V1, which is 240,000. So result is going to be for V2, V2 is going to be 112,000, 12,000. This 12,000 volt is going to be V1 for second transformer. And this V1, 12,000 volt calculate V2 for the second transformer, which is delta V. Again, use transformer equation. V2 divided by V1 for the second transformer, and 2 divided by 4, and 1 for the second transformer. And I can calculate V2. It is N2 over N1. N2 for second transformer is 2 and 2. N1 for the second transformer is 600 multiplied by V1 for second transformer, 12,000. So when we multiply them as right term, we're going to be uh, 40 
400 volts then is V2 and delta is going to be 400 volt for question number seven. 